here's a fact. You don't know what the results of your work is going to be. Any day that you do the work, or even you have a goal for three months later, or a month later, or a year later, you don't know if the work that you're doing is going to result in the thing that you had planned. Hopefully it will, and sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And it wasn't because you didn't try or you didn't plan for it. So the fact is that you and I, neither of us, have a guarantee of what is going to happen with the actions that we take, right? You don't have a guarantee. The only, and, and the, the other fact is that you have to work if you want to have any level of material comfort, or maybe if you're financially supported by somebody else, you have to work because you know that that's how you will truly grow and fulfill your um, sense of purpose and contribution. So two facts that we know. We have to work. And number two, we don't know what the result of our work will be. No matter how smart you are, no matter how uh, you know, you've paid money to, to a coach to give you the per or consultant to give you the perfect business plan, it doesn't matter. You've taken classes and you have a, an ideal week-to-week -week plan, month-to-month -month plan that's going to lead you to a successful, authentic business. There's no guarantees for any of that. So we have to work and yet we don't know the results. And so what can we do? We can only control one thing, which is how we work. Now we can also control how much we work. That's the other, I guess we can control two things, how much we work and we can control how we work. Now in this video, I wanna talk, talk about how we work. Most of us work in a way we've been raised by this mantra of work hard, or recently it's more known as hustle. Um, you know, hustle your face off, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say. I actually, I really like Gary Vaynerchuk for a lot of reasons, um, but this is one point where I would disagree. I think he softened his message over the years, actually. But he used to say, hustle your face off. And that's a lot of the motivational uh, you know, gurus are using that kind of language of hustle and pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And uh, you just got to work hard and like grind, right? That's actually the, the current word is grind. You got to grind, you know, hustle, grind, you know. Um, and that's how we are usually taught to work. What does hustle and grind mean? It means working like this, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like the, um, you know, the football, the high school football player working out, ah, you know, that kind, of, that kind of feeling as we work, right? And yeah, there, there's a place for that. There's a, you know, that kind of energy can help you to keep going if you're, if you're, you know, stretching yourself, especially physically, et cetera, kind of those, those sounds and those, that kind of angry or, you know, ferociousness can, can help for sure. But that's not how most of us, that's not the kind of work that most of us do. <laughs> we're usually at the computer, we are writing something, we're thinking about something, we're planning something, we're responding, we're organizing. It's not a hustle, grind, ferocious football player kind of energy. Um, it doesn't make sense to that. And yet we still have this kind of way of working that is tied to the results. So if we think we're going to get good results, we keep working, right? And if we're doubtful we're going to get good results, we stop working. Uh, we doubt ourselves and we say, well, maybe this isn't worth it how does this matter anyway? Who's going to, who's going to even see this? Uh, you know, I'm probably not coming across wise or smart or, uh, you know, I don't want to be looked down on. I don't want to be criticized. What if this, so what if, what if someone takes this advice and, and disagrees with me or, uh, or 
gets a bad result or whatever it may be, we usually work with fear. That's how we usually work. Whether or not you know it, right? We usually have, we've been raised to work with fear as the base underlying uh, emotion that gives rise to anxiety, self-doubt, self-criticism, perfectionism, procrastination, all of that stuff that uh, prevents you from working with joy is fear. That's the underlying essence of it all. And starting today, and maybe you've been practicing this already. Maybe you've read my book, Joyful Productivity, or taken my course on that. But starting today, I encourage you, maybe even challenge you, to work from love. So what does that mean, to work from love? It means recognizing that there is love within you, um, that deep within you, available at all times, is a space and an energy of profound joy, uh, peace, um, focus, um, and love, and a sense of well-being. Deep within you is that space all the time. Sometimes you're not in touch with it. Maybe a lot of times we're not in touch with it. But it's not natural to be in touch with it unless you repeat that practice of being in touch with it. Because the opposite has happened all your life. You have practiced being in touch with the underlying essence of fear about everything that you do. This might not work out. What if so-and-so criticizes me? What if I look bad? It's all fear, right? And that's how we've been raised, typically. School, right? And the, the workplace is based much on fear rather than love. And so that's how we work when we're building our own business, too. Even though it's our own business, we get to decide how we work. We are still working a lot in that fear rather than the essence of love which from which springs joy and creativity and calm focus and all the other good stuff that can be infused in our work today and every day so my question to you if you choose to, you can feel free to comment below how do you reconnect with that space in you of profound and never-ending joy profound and eternal peace and unconditional love. How do you connect with that space within yourself? You probably have a way of doing it. I'm sure you have a way of doing it. Maybe it's something that you might want to do more often. The way I do it, I call it energy reboot. Uh, I've talked about it in various videos. You can search online for my energy reboot practice, just George Cow energy reboot, and you'll probably find my blog post about that. Um, that's what I do multiple times a day. I usually do it uh, at least once every working hour, um, sometimes twice an hour, so every half hour, uh, I do the energy reboot. So what about you? And that, that only takes me you know, less than a minute to do the energy reboot. Um, some people meditate, and that's a wonderful thing. Or some people pray, and that's a wonderful thing. Or journal, great. But the, the problem is that the meditation and, and the journaling and the prayer usually only happens like once or twice a day. Like you, you, you meditate in the morning, and then you're supposed to be good for the rest of the day, and then you meditate in, again in the evening. Or you pray before your meals, and you pray in the morning and before you go to bed, great, wonderful. But what about praying every half hour? What about praying every you know hour, calling out for you know for for support in reaching that deep space of well-being again? So that's really the practice that I and or journaling. I mean, journal at night, great, great. 
But what about journaling once an hour to, as if to help you get back into that spaciousness of, you know, being, being one with, with everything or however you want to call it. So, uh, and, and Stacy wrote here, breathe. Yeah. You know, um, exactly. You know, intentional breathing, not just, you know, in the morning when you go outside and you breathe, but you, you should be intentionally breathing all the time, you know, every hour, come back to intentional breathing, you know? So that's my question for you. And my encouragement for you today is to reconnect and recommit to whatever practice helps you find that spaciousness of perfect joy, peace, love, playfulness, therefore, security. If you, if you understood and reminded yourself of the complete security that is the truth of who you are and of your life, do you believe that? Well, if you reconnect with what you believe to be true about that, you will come to believe it as if it was not even a faith statement. It is, it's like it's actually real. I actually believe that I'm completely secure. You know, reconnect so that you can work from a place of genuine creativity. Because genuine creativity comes from total security. Right? Be, be, if we don't have that, we have fear, which then creates a necessity of work that is actually filled with anxiety and fear of judgment. And so we are not authentic. We are working for somebody else's praise. We're working for the money rather than for the worthwhileness of the task itself. And it is true, of course, we need money and we need praise to be, have a business that works. But if you first connect with that eternal security and then find your creativity from there, from that spaciousness, you will create more authentically, more consistently, because you'll actually be having fun in everything that you do, not just on the weekends and evenings when you're playing this or watching that or enjoying this. No, no, you'll be having fun right now, all the time, whatever you are doing, writing that email, cleaning your desk, organizing your files, uh, doing your bookkeeping, uh, updating your website, solving this problem, you know, whatever it is, you'll be having fun because love is fun, joy is fun, peace is fun, genuine creativity out of eternal security is fun. And out of the fun aspect of work, will come the sustainability of your work and the consistency of it and a power of presence that, that isn't there when there's fear. So um, that's what I encourage you to reconnect with today. Um, reconnect with that, that spark within you of perfect love and work from there. Do your business from there. And that way you won't be feeling like you always have to attach what you do to a result. Oh, I'm talking to this person, so therefore they must say yes to me, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this or I am posting that and I must therefore get a certain level of response. I'm selling this, so therefore I must get these sales or else otherwise I'll feel discouraged and, and want to quit and anxious and all that stuff and self-doubt and criticism. That's all because of your practice of fear all your life, your practice of working from fear and, and you know, a fear of someone's judgment or of, of your own judgment of you know, whatever. It is. So now let's work in a new way, starting today. Reconnect using your own practice that you know works to help you reconnect with that spaciousness within you. And starting today, reconnect with that multiple times a day. Set a reminder for yourself, however, oh, every hour, top of the hour, have I reconnected today? Have I reconnected this hour? I haven't. That's worth my minute to reconnect. I can have 59 minutes to work, fine, but I need that one minute to reconnect. I do this actually for, for, th for three minutes every half hour. I do a stretch practice and then I do, I do my reconnection with my reboot. 
it's worth it's worth 10% of my working time. I tithe 10%. Tithe means 10%, right? So in every 60 minutes, I tithe six minutes. So I only work 54 minutes, but I tithe six minutes to my stretching, my well-being practices. And what about you? Do you have a budget every working hour for your well-being? Isn't your well-being worth it? Or are you just unconsciously working? And that's what it means to live and work consciously, doesn't it? I mean, to have a conscious business, it's not just to have conscious principles, but have conscious practices every working hour. Otherwise, it's not a conscious business. It's not a conscious life. It's unconscious, autopilot, uh, practicing the fear that we've practiced all our life. So today, return to the practice of love. Return to the practice of connection every single hour. It's worth it. One minute out of every hour, that's all I ask of you. And you can stretch towards doing it for six minutes every hour like I do it, right? Every single hour. Not just in the morning meditate, not just in the evening pray. Every single hour. And with repetition and practice comes a presence and a uh, a normality, joy and calmness will be your normal way of being. And focus and creativity and authentic uh, risk taking, not much is risky anymore for me because I believe in internal security. So everything is just play. Everything is just play, you know. That will become normal for you too. And when that becomes, as, as that becomes more and more normal, you will be able to create and, and, and explore and, and experience a lot more in your business. So I hope this is beneficial for you. And I look forward, if you want to comment below with what your practice is that you're going to do every hour, go for it. Let me know. I'd love to see that. All right. Thanks for joining me for this video, um, especially those who were able to make it live. Helena. Tom, Stacy, Marie Louise, Karen, Jace, Carissa, Paolo. Thank you all for joining me live here. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Tom, you are right on about it's very challenging to, uh, if you already find yourself in a uh, financially tight position, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to return to that love, and it's probably more important than ever, right? Because none of us want to feel anxiety, uh, of course. None of us want to worry. And worry and anxiety don't really help us to work smarter but if we we want to, of course we're going to work smarter of course we're going to maybe work more okay work more hours if we, if we need to but how we work is in, entirely how you work is entirely in your control every single hour so take that minute take that minute every hour today every hour today, no matter what you're doing, to reconnect. All right. Blessings, and I will see you all in the next video.